I'm about to program a high-tech digital 7954 servo with the HFP25 and the HFP30 servo programmers. If you'd like to see how I do it, let's go ahead and zoom in and get to work. We are going to start with the HFP25, referred to furthermore as the 25, and here is our high-tech 7954 digital servo. The 25 has been out for a while and it's considered the older of the programmers, but you plug the servo to be programmed in the upper servo connector on the right hand side. And the 25 has its own battery, so we don't have to plug anything else in. We turn it on and in this case, it went right to manual test mode. And so you turn the jog wheel and you see the pulse width and you can move the servo. So right off the bat, you can see that uh, the servo we know that the center is usually around 1500 and right now we can see that the arm is not centered so uh, you can use the up and down arrows to go through the different sets settings but we want to go to program reset whenever we program a high-tech servo the first step is to do a full reset so we go to reset we select it and then we have to hit up and down at the same time we see reset success and so now this servo is back to factory default programming if we go back to the manual test we can see now that um, I don't know if I didn't notice where it was swinging before but it is at factory reset position so what I'll do is I will go to uh, 1500 because this is going to be 1500 is where the high-tech programmer will program center. So we will take the arm off and this is where we start finding center. We will position it as close to however you, wherever you, you want your starting part to, point to be. Now there's different situations. In this situation, I want my starting point to be 90 degrees to the servo case. A lot of people think this is the absolute law for all servos, and it's not necessarily the best for every situation, but uh, that's why I like to say, let's start off with where you want to start. So I do want to start with 90 degrees. I found a position on the output shaft where the arm is pretty close to 90 degrees and we can see now default settings uh, for high-tech servos is 60 degrees each direction so that's a total of 120 degrees of rotation uh, i am going to set this to 45 degrees in each direction um, i will go into the details why i'm doing this um, why i like 45 that that will be a topic for another video so we go to the setting EPA setting and the first setting it wants us to do is the center point so now we found the point on the output shaft that's close so I'm going to take a straight edge and this is kind of my little trick I know some of you might think this is uh, annoying or why is he doing this but this really only takes a minute or two I get my straight edge and find a flat part on the servo case and then look through the holes on the servo arm and I establish, I, I find the straight edge through those holes and I kind of move the whole fixture side to side and see where that straight edge, I move the the servo arm I find that center point so I can see that it's straight through those holes in the servo arm this is just um, my little trick and a lot of times you can move things around so you can get a I use that nice silver straight edge and uh, a lot of times you can move it so you get a reflection on the metal and it shows up really bright through those holes and so what we're gonna do I found that I really like negative 12 for my center point. Uh, here we see that the center point that I like is negative 12. So I'm going to write that down on notepad 
because we're going to need that in the next step. And this is uh, one of the programming uh, ways of the 25 that differs from the 30. And uh, we'll describe that more in a little bit. So I'm writing down negative 12 center. So to set the center point, we have to hit the M button center and you see center pops up. So now it's asking us to set the left value. So now if you notice the numbers went from minus 12, now we're in the plus, you know, 160 or whatever. So for 45 degrees, I know for a fact that the magic number is 225. And the way we get that is because part of the 25's manual, there's a portion that says this value that we're sitting right now, 40 degrees equals about 100. But that's for the 5,000 series servos. The 7,000 series servos have dual, double the resolution, so we double that number. If 40 degrees equals 100 units here, then 45 degrees, assuming this is linear, 45 degrees equals 112.5 units on the 25. So if we double that 112.5, we double that for the 7,000 series servos, that's how we get 225 for the setting for 45 degrees. Now, I'll do another video about all this math because um, it took me a lot of trial and error to figure this out between these two models. So if you see, this is, it's, if we go negative, it will go to the right, but we can't set actually plus 225 is because the center started at negative 12. So we actually have to take 225 minus 12 and set this to 213 because this setting is relative to your center point. So when we're ready, and this is tough, we hit the left button and you see left position come up. And so now we need to go ahead and, and set the right position. So now we're going into negative numbers and we have to do the opposite. We have to add 12 to 225. So what we're gonna do is set this to negative 237. And then we hit the right button and we see right position come up. Now that endpoint is selected. So now we wants us to set the fail safe value. I just go ahead and put this back to my center value, which is negative 12. And we just have to hit both up and down at the same time. And you'll see FS position locked. And the servo's programmed. We hit exit and we go back into EPA mode. So now we can go into the manual or auto, but uh, now we see we're getting 45 degrees in each direction. And we see that center is at 1500. So that's the 25. And let me pause this really quick. Now, the 30 is a little bit different. And what's cool about the 25 is that you can actually, uh, you see where the servo's plugged in. There's a servo port underneath that on the right hand side. And that is, can you can plug that into your receiver and into a channel and you can measure the outgoing pulse width from your radio and I use a Jetty radio and I can actually see that within the radio, but most radios you can't. So the 25 is a great tool to be able to measure what exact pulse widths are coming out of radio channels. And also there's no way to, what we just programmed on the 25, there's no way to see those values. You have to reset and then just reprogram again. The 30 allows you to see what values are programmed. However, those values are completely different than what the 25 shows. So it's cool and confusing and annoying at the same time. So here's the HFP 30. Now the HFP 30 does not have an internal battery. So you have to plug in the battery on the left on the top. And then there's two, two servo ports on the right, one to 
to run a second servo to sync things and one to actually program the servo. So we'll go ahead and plug in the battery and we'll enjoy a much larger, nicer display than the 25. So the slide on the right hand side goes from test to program mode. So we'll slide it up to go to program mode. And this is where you would plug in your servo. And there is um, manual test, which is pretty much the same use the jog wheel and you can see the servo move accordingly and you see the pulse width output nice and clear. If we get back and we go into the auto ESS, uh, this kind of, it's called extreme and there's some other settings in here to go slow, but I like this one because it goes between 900, 1500 and 2100 and you can easily see really quick what the endpoints are. But let's go into the program mode. So with the program mode, you can the 30 allows you to program D series, 5000, 7000 series, and the B series. And you have to choose which kind of servo you're doing. So we choose the 7000 series. And as soon as you go in here, you see that the, there are some initial settings, 192, 4052, and 192. Uh, and so they're different values, but at least you get to see something in there. So to, again, what did I say before was the first step is to always pro, uh, reset your program on the servo first. So if you scroll down to the second page here, you can see that there is a factory default set. So when you select that, you then go to a screen where you have to move the jog wheel to the left, move it to the right, and then hit enter and then that resets so so now you if we go back to page one you can see minus 240 positive 240 and uh, a different center point so remember i said that the center points uh, i mean the default range of motion is 60 degrees so now we see negative 240 and 40 so that another difference between the 25 and the 30 is that the 30 uses um completely um unrelated throws. So now it's not, remember we had to subtract and minus uh, 12 because we programmed negative 12 as the endpoint on the 25. Now with the 30, we don't have to do any of that. We just have to find an endpoint and then we say negative 240, negative 200, negative 100, and then positive 100 if we want to dial in a specific um, degree value. However, there I have not been able to find what these values mean. Uh, so, but what we've just seen here is the fact that we set 45 degrees up on the 25 and we load it up in the 30 and we see that it's 192. So we know that for the 7000 series that 45 degrees is 192. And we did a factory reset, and since we know that factory default uh, range is 60 degrees, and now we see negative 240 and positive 240, that for the 30, programming 60 degrees on a 7000 servo is 240. So when we go to set things, it wants us to put that jog wheel in the center, and it will give little arrows for us to point which way to go. So we select neutral, and this is where it's asking us to set neutral. And if you remember, 4052 was what, what the center was. So we'll just go ahead and put it right back to where we had set it with the 25. So we select 4052, and now we go to the left and right endpoints. So remember, these are not related to anything. These are absolute values. So remember, it was negative 192 and positive 192. And you can see the servo arm moving it's going right to 45 degrees. So we can, again, don't have to worry about adding or subtracting a center value. It's absolute 192 and negative 192. And there we're all set. And that's programming with the HFP 30. And we can go back into the manual test and we can see 1500 is right about center. And if we go into the ESS auto mode, we can get this going and we can see we're, we're back to center and 45 degrees. So hope you guys enjoyed this, uh, the, the comparison of the 25 and 30. I'm, I'm glad I have both because, I'm, to be honest with you, I, I need both to kind of really 
really find out the, the, the details when I want to program servos uh, for specific use cases and specific degrees. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll have some more servo programming videos coming up in the future. Thanks for tuning in and we'll talk to you later.